Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us for the um, presentation on how to create a proposal for the upcoming 2018's our 31st annual conference for NAGAP. Uh, my name is Marcus Hanscom. I'm the director of graduate admission here at Roger Williams University in Bristol, Rhode Island. And joined today and, and our extraordinaire is Cami Baker Clancy from Empire <laughs> State College in New York. And she's also your NAGAP education chair. So she's going to get us started. And if you have any questions, you'll notice on the right side of your screen, there is a panel with GoTo uh, webinar that we're using today. And you can ask any questions that you'd like and be happy to answer those as we go along. And we'll also take some time at the end to do that. So um, if you have anything, just let us know. And off we go, Cami. Okay. Thanks, Marcus. We're doing a little switcheroo here with the uh, mouse so I can present. Um, Marcus and I did this for the first time last year, and I'm happy that he would agree to do it with me again this year, especially since he's the tech wizard and uh, updated all of our templates and everything. So today, um, whoop, there we go. See, now I'm already uh, there. Today, uh, we're going to give you some important information about the 2018 conference. The theme this year is going to be sustain and innovate from strong foundations to creative solutions. Uh, sustain and innovate is really our overall educational theme for this year. So that's going to really be the focus of all the different educational opportunities that NAGAP is going to be offering, including our um, professional development institutes, uh, the webinar series that we're putting together that's going to uh, kick off in September uh, and will be available to our members uh, for about, I think we're going to do five sessions this year um, on particular areas of the GEM life cycle and how we are uh, sustaining what we're doing now while trying to incorporate some innovation and new ideas to, to move our graduate programs into the next uh, era. We're going to go over the proposal format requirements. Uh, we'll explore a little bit about the session formats. We've changed that up a, a little bit this year. Uh, we're going to explain about how you build a topic from conceptual idea to the proposal stage, optimizing uh, the topic and your approach to, for the audience, and then all about the takeaways. Uh, as you know, you've been to hopefully a lot of uh, NAGAP conferences and uh, institutes, we really try to build in takeaways so that you have something tangible that you can bring back to your office and actually put into action. So this is a key component of whenever someone submits a proposal uh, for our conference. And then certainly time for questions. So most important, uh, save the date. And you guys have probably already done that if you're considering uh, submitting a proposal or have already started one. The conference this year is going to be April 11th through 14th. And we're going to be back in New Orleans. So we're very excited about that. Uh, conference committee is already well on their way to structuring what our uh, sessions are going to be like. And uh, we're really excited about the opportunity to go back to New Orleans. The call for proposals is on the NAGAP website, but you've probably received several email notifications as well. Um, the deadline to submit in total, and this is all the components that you need to submit uh, a proposal, is due by September 25th. So you do have a little over a month to really nail down uh, your subject area if you're going to co-present or have a panel, uh, be able to nail down your um, your co-presenters, and really kind of fine-tune your proposal before the submission deadline. Once you do that, be sure to register for the conference. Once registration opens, it usually opens in January because uh, quite often, and we always kid Marcus because he did this once, uh, he, forgot, he came to the conference and forgot to register. Yeah, um, thanks, <laughs> I had to throw you in because, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm guilty of almost doing that because there's been a few times when it's been, you know, the, the last minute and I realized I have everything else set, but I forgot to register. So make sure you do that. Make sure you prepare. Um, and also, if there's any budgetary implications about registration, that you make sure you have your ducks in a row. Um, because all presenters are required to register for the conference.
So the goals of our educational sessions really are um, to bring new information to our colleagues. Uh, the proposals really should be aligned with the theme of our conference, and again, that's sustain and innovate from strong foundations to creative solutions, it really gives you an opportunity to kind of focus on maybe the history of a, a particular initiative that you um, launched and how it started and how you uh, maintained it and improved it through uh, innovative solutions. So really a great opportunity to, uh, to really um, align the what you're doing with what the theme is for this year. You know, some topics are not going to be an exact match, but it's great to keep that in mind when you're when you're formulating your proposal, writing your abstract, etc. The proposals really should focus on the various aspects of graduate enrollment management life cycle. So that's from prospective student all the way through alumni engagement. And you're going to see um, the domains that we created, the seven categories, we fine-tuned them a little bit this year. We tweaked them a bit to see if um, it might broaden out some of the topic areas that we're interested in. But these really um, align with um, the areas of the graduate student life cycle. Now, topics for each domain were suggested really based on a lot of research that we've done over the years and, uh, and feedback from our NAGAP members. We, we try to look at our strategic plan, and we've just gone through a whole new process with a new strategic plan through uh, for NAGAP. And we really try to pick out items that have come to light within our strategic plan to really highlight those. So um, that's where we've changed some of the category titles slightly to really reflect that. You can identify a topic of your choice as it re relates to one of these domains. And you're going to see, again, there are typical things that um, that we normal normally see with a little bit of variation. Now, how do we create the call for proposals? We always look at all the information we've received over the years. So we looked at last year's conference evaluations. Um, we looked at the feedback we received. So when you do do evaluations at the conference, make sure that you spend the time. I know it, it sometimes is difficult to remember, oh, I've got to do that online uh, evaluation of a session. But the feedback we receive really um, helps us prepare for and, and improve for future offerings. Um, we looked at survey results, um, best practices, and then any kind of current information that we've received on, on GEM um, issues. There are a few different changes. I think we'll talk about those probably on this slide, I think it would be good. In addition to the question about publications and presentations, we added that last year. We're trying to gather information from our, from our members about, um, you know, any publications that they uh, might have submitted articles for and have been published, um, any presentations they've done at other um, venues, whether it's uh, another national or uh, regional conference, for example. We feel that was a, a great question that we added last year. We've gained a lot of information from our members, which is going to help us in the future when we're looking for other speakers on particular topic areas. So please pay attention to that when you look at the proposal. We also added a question. It's a, it's a drop-down box um, this year where you can actually pick items. Um, we really wanted to get the range of the presenters. And that really focuses on um, their voice. So what's their frame of reference? What perspective are they bringing to the topic that they're talking about? So if you've gone on our site and looked at it first before deciding to do a proposal, you'll see that question. Um, so we're looking for people that really represent all the different areas within graduate uh, enrollment management. You'll see that uh, we like to see if someone's from a specific uh, program or school of, like a nursing school or a law school, for example. Um, are they from financial aid department? Do they work in alumni affairs? Um, are they at a mid-level level administrator or, or a senior administrator? Do they work only in marketing and recruitment? We want to get a good picture of the kind of voices that are reflected, again, in the particular proposal that you're submitting. 
So that's another little change we made this year. Um, we're also going to be doing a follow-up survey with those that have uh, submitted proposals. Um, a little more geared to diversity, not only um, diversity of ethnicity and um, um, you know male female <laughs> gender ethnicity i mean uh, gender uh, differences um, but also you know what type of institution do you work for? Do you work for a, a large university? do you work for a small private liberal arts college um, to get a good sense of the diversity of our speakers too. So that's going to be a follow-up um, that we're going to be doing with all the people who submit proposals. The Education Committee got together in February for our Education Committee Summit to really go over our, our new strategic plan and kind of refine some of the areas within that area. Uh, but we also pulled items out of the strategic plan, as I mentioned before, to really kind of focus on um, what's our what's our emphasis going to be for the upcoming three to five years uh, for NAGAP. As I mentioned, some of what came out of that meeting is to change our domain areas a little bit. So. For this year's theme, Sustain and Innovate, uh, we decided that uh, recruitment and marketing is, is kind of a mainstay. Many of us do that. Some uh, have it, a larger focus of their responsibilities than others. But that's an area where we always get a lot of really good, interesting proposals from our members. We decided that we would change our financial question a little bit, our domain, and, and call it Money Matters to broaden that out to not only be about um, finances of our students, but also, um, you know, development of grants that we might uh, pursue and things of that nature. Uh, we decide to change admissions operations to integrated operations because, as you know, many of us are integrating many services now as we move towards more of a graduate enrollment management model. Student services is an important aspect of that. Alumni engagement across the student life cycle, not just at the end or at the beginning with prospective students, but really a whole gamut of mentoring, et cetera. Uh, enrollment modeling and strategic planning, and then our career staff and personal development. So just to give you, again, an idea of where we were going with this, recruitment and marketing, here's just a few examples. You know, recruiting strategies that schools use uh, when they're facing enrollment challenges, or trying to develop new markets, for example. Um, money matters, again, how does fund, funding impact yield and retention? You know, if you're at a school, I'm, I'm at a, a public institution where we do not have a lot of funding available for our graduate students. Sometimes that really uh, impacts people's ability to, you know, enroll in your institution. They may uh, not want to take out student loans or um, really might not be in a position where they can accumulate more debt. They might not be getting reimbursement from their employer. So how does not having uh, substantial funding really impact your yield and retention, for example? And then, as I mentioned before, um, more and more of us now are writing and trying to secure grants that are going to support graduate students. So that would be another aspect. Or, uh, again, Money Matters is so broad, you could talk about how you get the biggest return on investment for reorganizing your office. Um, again, anything that's innovative is going to be a real plus to bring to the table for this conference. Uh, integrated operations, again, not only admissions, but outreach, recruitment, admissions, enrollment. What are our best practices for integrating these systems? Uh, how do we create a clear and actionable plan? And then um, another example would be maximizing your team and how to cross train, which, you know, we always talk about cross training. It's probably over talked about. Um, but it's really, really, especially this with the smaller staffs that you get, or if you're restrained on your ability to hire additional staff, um, that's really a, an important model to, to talk about how to best do that. Uh, certainly graduate student services, how do we really promote an institutional culture of student service at the graduate level, which is a big, um, 
I think, issue that a lot of people deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Slide's a little slow here. Oops, sorry guys. On back one. Alumni engagement, as I mentioned before, across the student life cycle, so not just at the end, but really um, how do we really uh, have a positive effect on our current students? You know, it helps with retention as well. So this is a, a different way to kind of broaden that particular topic area out. Uh, enrollment modeling and strategic planning, it's kind of self-explanatory. And I, I kind of want to push more on the career staff and personal development because I feel like many of us now are trying to incorporate more of that you know into our office management um, years ago I, I don't think we thought about um, how much personal development is really required when I mean, we do uh, professional development attend workshops go to conferences etc but there's other ways too that can really improve um, you know career projection for for your employees that might be reporting to you and other staff and as well as for yourself so um, think about that if you've got some burning issue that you uh, really think would help people in this particular area I mean last year we there was one person I think that did a presentation on a 360 uh, review where it allows people to really comment on you know how you're doing as a manager uh, we use that a lot here at my college, which is pretty interesting. Um, but you know, there's a lot of new um, new vehicles out there to 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 use to assess people's um, professional development. So um, I think that's a good topic, Gary. Too. We don't normally get. Last year, I think we got a few more uh, presentations than we normally have, which was good. Um, you know, our goal is really to have a good representation of all these seven areas of these domains. There's four options for the educational sessions. Um, you can do a presentation, a panel discussion, a special interest forum, or a vendor presentation. So presentation is pretty self-explanatory. Um, and I think most of us do that on a day-to-day -day basis uh, in their offices. Um, the panel presentation is a little bit different. I mean, sometimes we put panels together and it's just people talking for 10 minutes each on a panel. Really think about if you're going to do a panel discussion to limit it to maybe three or four participants uh, with a moderator and have a set of specific questions on a particular topic so that each panelist can um, reflect on the questions that the moderator is asking and also it gives you an opportunity then to to open things up with the audience if people want to respond to those questions I think the the best panels I've seen have really worked this way so really think about that if you want to put together a panel discussion and a lot of people are more open to do a panel because they don't feel that it all rests on them when they do the presentation so it's a great opportunity to um, to be able to collaborate with your colleagues now, a special interest forum um, really is another opportunity for people to really to do more of a roundtable discussion. And it should be something that's very timely, something that is um, now in the forefront and that everybody's talking about. Sometimes that's hard to gear up and get a presentation submitted, uh, you know, so far ahead of of when the conference is going to be but you know we certainly know that there's a lot of topics in uh, graduate enrollment management that are really at the forefront right now um, that would be appropriate for a special interest forum so think about that when you read the the description we have all those descriptions in the um, proposal site which is called Presis and you'll be able to read that there's links to it so you can review that information before you decide which type of presentation uh, am I going to use and then the vendor presentation there's really a difference between a vendor as a vendor partner looking to provide a presentation about a particular service or a product that um, that they provide if someone is going to do a vendor presentation then they really need to um, be one of our contributing 
vendors and there's a there's a cost for exhibiting we do have this information right on uh, the Precis site for people to see if a vendor wants to participate they certainly in a different way they can participate with other um, NAGAP members who are doing presentations but again it has to be um, you have to co-present with a college or university the presentation really has to be more research based not an opportunity for a sales pitch for example um, and the vendor really cannot submit multiple education sessions we had um, last year I think we had one vendor that um, that did that that had they were good sessions and they were uh, with other participating campuses but um, you know it was a little bit overload so we have really limited it th this year we want them to be beneficial obviously if a vendor has really good information that they want to share uh, research that they've done if they work with a partner institution I think that's very appropriate um, but again if they want to really focus on a service or a product they that they uh, offer then they really need to do um, a traditional vendor presentation as an exhibitor and again all that information is right on Precis the first page that you look at so guiding principles when you're thinking about putting together your proposal just what's new what are your best practices again think about that theme of sustaining and then innovating um, how can any of this new learning be used by your colleagues again we want to provide some tangible takeaways for people um, some of these things are you know common sense items like make sure that you uh, allow time for interaction and, and questions and answers um, and consider the levels of your audience so you might have really new folks because we know that even though we do a new professionals um, summer institute where this year we had over 100 people it was really wonderful um, many people are hired at a different time frame so the first time they actually get to come to an ag app um, session is the annual conference so you might have really new folks in your sessions and you might have very senior people so it's good to be mindful of what's my topic who's that going to be of interest to and then make sure um, that you consider that you're going to have various levels within your presentation and then again something that's really kind of um, common sense but um, the approach that you have for your particular presentation um, should be more about is it tactical operational or strategic in this way um, we're not kind of segmenting things out based on people's level of experience or how many years they've worked in the field etc it can be um, a type of a presentation that's going to be helpful no matter where somebody falls in that that kind of time frame so when you're thinking about putting your uh, proposal together think about which one of these areas are you going to kind of focus on is this going to be tactical something that's about using doing and implementing um, is it going to be more operational you know how might we develop uh, an initiative um, or a process or is it going to be strategic where you're synthesizing everything you know um, you're analyzing managing evaluating and then deciding so these are just very general ideas of uh, again how you're going to approach your proposal and and the really kind of the the voice of it you know for the presentation now just a, a quick overview of the proposal application there's going to be a, a section where you put your personal info and bio yours and the other participants and you know that's really important too as I said we added that um, range of presenters section so that can really kind of add on to this and, and support um, the types of folks that might be on your panel if you're doing a panel um, we talk about presentation and publication experience uh, the type of session the educational domain the approach the abstracts really important it's it's uh, limited to a certain amount of words I forget how many I think it's 300 I apologize if I don't know right off the bat but you'll see it in there 
Uh, abstract is really important. You really want to make sure that you present the information in a way that's going to be attractive to people. They're going to want to come to your session. But also, really be mindful of what you're saying in your abstract so that you're going to deliver on whatever you're talking about. And we've all been through that. I mean, how many times have you gone to a conference, you've gone to a session, you think it's going to be about one thing, and then it's totally uh, about a different area. So be really mindful in your abstract. What are you going to do, talk about? Um, what are the takeaways? What do you want people to learn from this? And again, make sure you tie that in somehow uh, where it's reflective of what our theme is for this year. We require that you uh, think about learning objectives and then the outline. And um, if you do a panel, again, remember to think about the topic that you're going to be talking about and develop the questions for the panel ahead of time for the discussion. Now we talk about collaboration. Um, there's ways for you to connect with colleagues for collaboration. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but it's always fun to do that. Uh, one time I was just called out of the blue by somebody who saw that I had a interest area in a particular issue and asked me to be on their panel. So I did a panel with two people that I'd never been before. We did our session totally by meeting online and never ran through it. Um, until we were actually together at the conference. We worked together face-to-face -face for probably about a 45 minutes one day, half an hour. Um, it was a great experience. I really got to meet new people, and um, it was great to see other people's perspective on the topic that, that, that we were presenting on. So be open to that possibility, because I think that's really um, a great opportunity, again, to, to stretch a little bit. And then think about whatever topic that you're interested in, could that possibly be a two-hour session? And again, keep that uh, open because uh, quite often we get topics that are great and they're packed with information. And then we look at it as the reviewers and say, hmm, this could have really been a two-hour session easily. So think about that when you're constructing your uh, proposal. And when we're talking about collaborating a little bit, um, you can connect with colleagues either through our NAGAP Facebook page, LinkedIn, Twitter, other social media. Your chapters are a big way to connect with people. So check out your local NAGAP chapter and see if there's anybody from your area that wants to collaborate with you on, uh, on a proposal. Uh, vendor partners I mentioned before. Any professional listservs that you might be on, even if it's in a different area. Like several of my staff members belong to um, NASPA, for example, or NACADA, and, you know, they are always, um, you know, in discussions uh, on particular issues that are, you know, confronting us in graduate, in the graduate school. So there's other professional listservs that you could be on or you might belong to at your institution that would bring great um, perspective to graduate enrollment management. They could be people that work more in student service areas. Um, who, you know, could really benefit from presenting at NAGAP and also, um, you know, benefit our members from their uh, perspective and experience. So think about that. And you can always ask for recommendations. We're open to, um, you know, ask anybody on the board if you want to do that. It's, um, you know, we always have good ideas or we know people that might have um, expertise in a particular area. You can look at uh, past NAGAP publications. And you could always, I'm going to throw Melissa in here, you can always contact our NAGAP conference education chair, and that's Melissa Delaney at melissa.delaney at dominican.edu. Um, Melissa's on the annual conference committee, and she's the education chair. She's on the education committee uh, with me, so we have some continuity from all of our different offerings, but she'd be a great person to um, bounce some ideas off of as well. And, you know, I've mentioned this a couple of times today, but just remember your learning objectives should be aligned to the theme and the educational domains. So certainly the area that you're presenting on, whether it's recruitment and marketing or uh, integrated operations, for example, 
Um, and then the theme. It should, the objectives really should be clear, concise, and easy to understand. Again, these are common sense type of things. They should be actionable and measurable. Again, we want to be able to um, provide something that you can use when you go back to your home campus. Um, anytime you can reinforce with data is a plus. And it's helpful to share that with your colleagues too because all of us are running on different systems um, and it's great to get an idea or a different perspective from somebody on how you would reinforce certain things with the data that you, you have at your fingertips. Um, some people don't realize they have more information that they can utilize than, uh, than they believe. And then just some examples of, um, again, kind of action words that we, we kind of uh, suggest. And here's some examples of those too. Examples of learning objectives about evaluating, uh, comparing and contrasting, creating, analyzing. You know, pretty, again, straightforward information. Um, but, you know, uh, I often say this, you know, a lot of these things are common sense, but sometimes we get so bogged down in our day-to-day -day work that you forget and you always need a little bit of a reminder, which I think is a big, big plus. And with that, I'm going to turn our next section over to Marcus, if I can make this work. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Cammie. Um, I think I'm on the correct slide here, so we should be good. So I just you are. about uh, perfect. Um, talk to you a little bit about the evaluation of proposals, kind of what the education committee and the conference committee are looking for and how we collect uh, ultimately which presentations end up in the conference. Um, for those of you who've been before, we get a lot of different sessions in there. It's, it's a pretty, it's a labor of love uh, for the folks that evaluate the process and the, the presentations. So there are rubrics that we look through. The education committee over the past several years has been very deliberate about and very intentional about how we evaluate um, sessions coming in. And you can see the rubrics that are on the Priestess site um, through the NAGAP's website. And, um, you know, we'll show you some of that here today. We do look at kind of the experience of submitters, but we want you to know that it's open to anyone who wants to present. We have, I mean, I know my first opportunity to present was in New York City. I think it was in 2009 for NAGAP. I had never presented before. I was a I guess second year member at the time of NAGAP, and I was pretty junior in, in, uh, as far as staff roles are concerned. And that opportunity is what opened up a lot of other doors and know that NAGAP is committed to offering those types of opportunities for people that are brand new or seasoned and everywhere, everywhere in between. And I want to kind of reiterate what Kimmy had said, that if you are interested in, in putting a proposal together and presenting, and maybe you don't want to do it on your own because your first time out or something, contact one of us. We can help connect you with uh, people that have similar expertise or we'd help you on something or just refining your proposal or abstract. Just let us know. We can help you with that. And Cami mentioned the regional chapters as being an opportunity for that. And that's a great way to kind of get your feet wet with a smaller group and kind of maybe test your topic and go from there. So um, certainly think outside the box with those and we're happy to help any way we can. There are four kind of categories we're looking for. We're looking for a current topic, as as Cammie talked to you a little bit about. Also, some outcomes and really making sure there's a purpose and really defined vision for your session and what people are going to walk away with when they come out. Uh, we also want to know that your topic is very well defined and that you have a good abstract because your abstract will appear in the in the uh, book uh, for the conference, or I should say, it's um, I guess it's in the back of the notepad that we're giving out now, the notebook that we're giving out, and it'll be on the um, the app for the conference as well. And then the presenter qualifications, and that set, that's just another element in the greater spoke. It's just it's just like when we talk to our grad students and they ask, is GPA the only reason we accept somebody? That's um, same kind of thing here. We're looking at a more portfolio approach on what you're bringing to the table with your session. So your deadline to submit, as you know, is September 25th, so we've got about a month and a half to do that. And then over the course of October and November, we'll begin evaluating proposals, and that'll be... Uh, a group of folks, as you see on the screen there, it's the conference chair and chair-elect, the conference education chair, and then the education chair being Cammie and, and the members of her committee as well. And then usually before the holidays, you'll have a notification on um, whether your, your uh, session has been 
approved and accepted for the conference. So just looking at the rubrics now, this gives you a sense of what the general rubric looks like, and it's very similar to for each of the four categories. But I'll just highlight, so in, the, in terms of a current topic, we're looking something that's relevant to the um, sustain and invite theme. So we certainly want you to try to align with that as best as you can. But we're also deliberate about keeping those themes a little broader so you have an opportunity to fit within that as best as you can. We want to see that you've done some focus on best practices, uh, maybe even done a little research and looked at other articles and statistics and analyzed data out there and so that you can show that you have a very current topic but that's relevant and applicable to the work that the attendees will be doing. And again, it can be on that spectrum of tactical or operational or strategic based on what, what Kimmy was talking about. And we're looking for a high level of participation. And that doesn't necessarily mean do you have the audience talking the whole time, no. But it's something that is engaging. It's a topic that people want to talk about. And you provide opportunities for connecting with the audience and keeping it interesting and timely. Outcomes are certainly important. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, I've, I've gotten a reputation in the NAGAP circle as giving homework, because that's tended to be how my presentations have gone. And if you think of it in that regard, when you have somebody come to your session, what can they walk out of the room with and do when they go back to their office the next week? What can they do over a series of months? What are the actual tangible takeaways that somebody can have? Um, and I think we've, and for those of you that have gone to NAGAP conferences over the years, I think we've made a very good uh, dent in that as far, or made some progress in that. As because uh, I can, you know, if you turn back dial eight, ten years, I remember going to a lot of sessions that were very biographical, and, and it was like, this is what we do, and this is what we did, and this is the initiative that we took on, and it it wasn't so much about here. If you want to do this, here's some things to think about, and here's how the success is. Here are the pitfalls of that. Um, you know, go back to your office and do X. So there was a lot. There's a lot more takeaways now, and we've gotten a lot more outcomes driven, and. Um, interestingly, mirrors kind of the marketplace of the students we're working with as well. So think about when somebody comes to your session and they spend an hour with you, what are they walking away with that's tangible? And if you think of your own attendance at other sessions, what are you hoping to gain, uh, gain out of those sessions and what can you provide to attendees that come to yours? So make sure you've clearly outlined goals and objectives and we're looking for that as we evaluate uh, your proposal. The title and abstract, fairly straightforward. We want something that's clear, we want to make sure people understand what it is you're going to be talking about. Of course, the intended audience, if you could make it somewhat clear in that, um, that'd be good. So if you say something like, um, you know, hitting the road for newbies, you know, something that's that's pretty straightforward. There might be a recruitment session for people that are brand new to the field versus something like strategic planning for uh, executives. That would be a very clear um, kind of upper level strategic discussion. So as much as you can, make it clear to the folks when they're reading the, the session title and description and uh, abstract that it's very clear on what they're going to be getting out of it and who it's intended for. Finally, we're looking at that qualifications piece. And, and uh, as I mentioned before, it's not a primary. It's not the overarching thing that we're looking for. It's just a, it's a supporting mechanism to see if you've had experience related to your topic, if you've done, if you've presented on this before somewhere, if you have particular educational background, um, certainly with some of the areas of GEM that we're trying to embrace within the conference, if it's somebody that comes from student affairs or worked with international student services, those types of experiences, no matter how deep in years they are, having that experience is helpful um, as we're evaluating the currency and the relevancy of the topic and your experience as it relates to it. So some final thoughts as we um, are talking to you about your proposals and things. Make sure you have actionable, take, actionable takeaways. And, and Cammie and I have talked about that a little bit. Here's just some examples that we put together for you. Um, and certainly, we can help you frame any topics that you have if you'd like. But these are very, you notice um, when Kim was talking about some of the action verbs, when you look at the beginning of each of these, it's all very actionable. It's things that you can take, like go develop something, review your analytics, assess your style of strengths with a leadership assessment. These are things that you go back to your office and you can say, I can do that either on Monday after I get back or shortly thereafter. And we're all guilty of saying we're going to do all these things when we come back from conference and then fall back into our work schedules and never revisit that. So if you think about your takeaways in that way, what things can be done with limited barriers and limited time and effort when people get back to their offices, but they can make something that's an actionable difference. That's really helpful. Uh, I will just mention quickly 
uh, the NAGAP learns hashtag, I think Cam might have talked about a little bit, but as you're going through your sessions, we've started using this throughout uh, the conference now, that if there's an actionable takeaway, tweet it out or put it on Instagram or put it on Facebook and use NAGAP learns. And we can hopefully kind of tie together some really actionable takeaways because we can't all be at every one of the six or seven sessions at each time slot. Uh, but if you can kind of aggregate that together, it'd be one way for all of us to share the various nuggets that we're pulling away from each, uh, each session. So thinking about why you should submit a proposal, I mean, you're all on here, so clearly you have an interest in doing that to begin with. But obviously you want to share your expertise with colleagues. There's a lot of opportunity that we all are experiencing different things in our, our work and um, our own institutions, even like institutions, do things very differently, very different. So it's a good opportunity to share your expertise. And of course, growing as a professional, I think um, a lot of my professional growth, I'd, I'd attribute specifically to NAGAP and the networks that I've built there and the opportunities to speak and to connect with our other people. Um, you can also, of course, talk about your uh, experiences in your LinkedIn or social media, highlighted on your resume. Um, these are experiences that um, we have done a panel the last couple of years, a uh, group of us from NAGAP, um, to talk about how NAGAP has given us professional opportunities. And, um, you know, in my case, I firmly believe that the job I'm in here now, um, my NAGAP experience had a lot to do with why I got the position. And there's a number of us that feel very similarly that for a variety of reasons, our NAGAP experience helped us get to the next level in our careers and actually tangibly get us a new job. So those things are very actionable for you as a professional. So consider that when you're um, putting together a proposal or thinking about proposing uh, a session for the conference. Also gives you an opportunity to highlight your school. Um, many institutions are supportive of, of professional development when you're presenting because you're able to get out there and um, kind of elevate uh, the reputation of your institution. Of course, you can kind of leverage that to go to the conference to begin with because some of you may not have the money. But if you say, hey, I'm presenting, um, you know, that's an opportunity to try to get some money uh, out of your schools and let you go. Um, also, some schools, and I've done this in the past as well uh, for both subordinates and myself, that if you've presented or participated in conferences, use it in your evaluation. That can be helpful. And have your school's media cover it um, to say that you're presenting on best practices and something. It helps in kind of this whole model that ACRO introduced on internal consulting is something that we all uh, should think a little bit more about and how we can leverage our own experiences to help our campuses, particularly on the graduate side. If you're at a campus that there's not a lot of folks doing grad, but you're kind of the resident experts, how you can establish yourself as the expert. And this is one way to do that. Uh, we remind you, you now we work in education. So think about this as far as takeaways and things. Um, share data, share best practices. Obviously, we're out there to help kind of the collective whole. Otherwise, we wouldn't be presenting and sharing the information that we have. Um, but give tangible takeaways. Think about your proposals and how they can really drive value for attendees. Um, I think you all quite understand that. But it's really important just to think about that as you're putting these together uh, so that it really becomes actionable for everybody that comes to your session. So just quick tips on preparing your proposal. Think about things that are your strengths and expertise and what's in your wheelhouse. Maybe there's something you just started dabbling in and you partner with somebody that's expertise is really deep in an area. That's an opportunity as well, and that'll help you grow. So that's something to think about. Um, of course, you have to consider the level of your potential audience. So if you're talking about how to build a communication plan in a CRM, that might be more tactical uh, versus how do you operationally implement a CRM and put together a group of cross-functional teams to um, implement a CRM. Or it might be strategic and saying, how is a CRM going to impact our recruitment efforts and how are we going to use it to increase yield or we're going to build our search efforts or we're going to um, build a new application. And so there might be some strategy pieces of that. But think of the various things that you're doing and how it might relate in a in a very um, kind of job function specific way and relate that in your proposal as best as you can. Um, get input from your colleagues. When you're putting these together, um, if you have questions or you want to get kind of refinement on proposals and things, reach out to Cami and I. Reach out to um, our conference chair or education chair. Um, reach out to anybody with a NAGAP, we can certainly help you, or just reach out with somebody in your um, your own circles on campus. There's a lot of us willing to help you out there, so if you need it, by all means, ask us to help. Um, remember that your abstract will appear in that conference program, so you want to try to make it very clear and, and easy to understand for uh, the folks that might be coming, and certainly that'll help your chances of acceptance and things as the conference committee and education committee are reviewing 
uh, your abstract. And make sure you cite your experience in your biography um, that really relates to your topic. So if you're talking about CRM impl implementation, talk about how you implemented Slate on your campus. Or if you're talking about student services, talk about how you're doing advising or how you're working with student affairs to build a grad student council. Those things are important for the committee to know because they'll be evaluating hundreds of proposals and they need to be able to look through and not everybody knows everybody, especially if you're kind of new in the NAGAP circle. And we really kind of encourage and want new people that have not been part of um, the board circles or the committees and things to present and get involved and have opportunities to grow in the organization. And we want to provide you those pathways. And so the more people that we can kind of introduce to that, the better off our organization is. So uh, we encourage you to put together a proposal regardless of your experience level and what your interests are. And hopefully we can kind of cultivate a really strong um, conference for 2018 in New Orleans. So uh, that said, uh, that wraps up my section of this. Um, and we're welcome to, you know, we're happy to answer any, any questions that you might have. And you have our contact information there. And as I mentioned, feel free to reach out to Cami or myself if you have questions or want help on your proposal or abstracts or just get some feedback. Or if you want a partner or if you want us to connect you with somebody to partner, by all means, let us know how we can help with that. So Cami, I'll toss it back to you if you want to throw anything else yeah, in. Just one other thing too, well, two things actually. I mean, Marcus mentioned how we really, um, this is a great opportunity for new folks who might not have presented previously to, to submit a proposal. So we really highly encourage that. Um, and there's one other thing I was going to say, now I can't remember. Oh well, <laughs> this is what happens when you multitask too much. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, if you want to um, partner with other folks, do get in touch with us. Um, you know, we can probably put you in, in touch with other people. Or what can happen, this is what I wanted to say, what can happen is um, sometimes when we get a look at all the proposals that are submitted, people might have submitted uh, similar topics. So if we do get items where, um, hey, this the focus of this would really complement this other proposal, we try to put those folks together perhaps co-present or build a panel. So um, kind of keep that in mind and kind of be open to that if you can because we did that a couple times last year and it worked out uh, fairly well. We've done that over the years um, but sometimes that happens because if we get too many proposals in one particular area uh, we try to see who could we put together and, and do kind of a, a collaboration. So I uh, just wanted to throw that out there. All right, so Does anybody there, have any questions? There aren't any questions at the moment, so if anybody has any, feel free to enter them in the questions box. Otherwise, we can give you back about 10 minutes of your time <laughs> since we didn't there you go. go. And thanks for attending today. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to getting your proposal. Oh, looks like someone's got a question, maybe. No, Matt, thanks for coming. We no, appreciate being here. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> I don't think oh, okay. any other questions, so. And Marcus, uh, you're probably going to, we taped this, so it will be up on the NAG app YouTube uh, later if you need to refresh, or if you have a colleague that you want to do a presentation with and they haven't been able to uh, attend today, you could let them know that that's on YouTube and they can take a look when they want to. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Appreciate you being here, and um, we hope to see your proposal and see you in New Orleans.